anyway right now. Okay, so footwork is the core and the base of all sword play, okay? Um, when you have a weapon, you've equalized everything so that you don't need superior strength or force, or even a lot of times skill, okay? You just have to hit your target before they have a chance to respond, okay? The easiest way to prevent that from happening is to simply stay out of range and to be able to control that range, right? Now, you can't co completely stay out of range the whole time because if you're out of range of their weapon, they're out of range of your weapon. This is, of course, where people started creating new weapons, like spears, right? Spears that would give you an advantage in reach, right, without giving them an advantage in, in being able to reach you as well, right? Okay, so we're going to start off really, really simply. Um, we'll kind of build up. You know, if we're standing in here, let's just kind of go diagonally here. Okay, um, in, in this particular setting, right, if we're, if we're dueling, okay, and of course, duel comes from the word meaning two, yada, yada, yada. So there are certain things that we know are true because we're dealing with one person, right, that we are now not going to have to worry about. Okay? We don't have to worry about anybody sneaking up behind us, right? Okay? So turning all the way around and spinning is not something that is going to take a huge high priority here. Right? At certain levels, you can integrate it and learn how to spin. We'll show you certain scenarios where that happens. Okay? But in this case, that's generally not going to be something you're going to go to. Okay? Because why? It's an easy one, right? Showing your back to the opponent. Right. And it's not necessarily showing your back to the opponent. You're taking your eyes off your opponent, right? So for a long time, I am now not facing my opponent, okay? Which is bad if I know I only have one of them, okay? So we can do that. Now, that's not to say that you're never going to turn around or anything like that. We, there are situations where we're going to do that. Um, but those aren't. Common. Okay, so when we're standing out here, we have distances that we kind of keep in uh, keep keep in our head, right? We have the distance of our stance, and when we stand stand here, we're gonna be standing in our ready stance, which is about shoulder width apart, like this, and then turned over here like this, so that our feet aren't necessarily crossed, and we're right in the middle. Okay. Now we can change this distance by taking a step out forward, right? So if I lunge forward here like this, that brings me closer to my target. And that's the whole purpose. I have my sword out here, I <coughs> bring it to my target there, right? Now, if you remember your technique for thrusting, you thrust first because you do not want to do this, <laughs> right? Because that has a long lag time and it'll give your opponent time to respond, okay? So if we're up here like this, that's just a reach there. So most of that distance is covered here by, by your footwork. Now, taking a step out like that is one thing we always have to be able to recover off of that. So remember this little dynamic. With your footwork, you can only go as forward as quickly as you can go back. Your, your body's not even gonna let you go beyond that. So you're gonna have a threshold. You have to find that kind of sweet spot where you can literally bounce in and off of your footwork um, to come in and out of range. Now, the other range that is that is uh, created is here with our weapons, right? Now, we're staying kind of close to each other here. I would not begin a duel in this position unless bound by the rules to do so, okay? Because from right in here, we are we can hit each other, okay? I can easily hit him, he can pretty easily hit me, right? But, at least from here, I can control a little bit of distance just by shifting here. So if he comes forward and tries to hit me, right, don't step. Oh, okay, don't step. Right, so if he, right, I can shift back like that, okay? Now, if I reach forward here like this, I might have a longer reach or something like that, but we're kind of stuck, right? We can't change these, right? That's where stepping comes in, that's where um, stance comes in, and all of that, right? Uh,
Where should we be looking? Just right at the sword? I tell you pretty much everything, okay? If you look at the feet, the feet can move independently of the body, all right, and they can trick you a little bit easier. So you want to keep your gaze kind of here on the body. So if we're here, and I come forward, good. <laughs> okay, so doing that. If I again, if I look at the feet, it might it might confuse me a little bit. If I look, you know, just at the head or just at the blade, that might also there. The other thing we want to worry about, not worry about, but we want to keep in mind is we don't want to focus on any one part of the person in exclusion of all others. Okay, so wherever we're focused. We kind of want to keep a soft focus so that as I'm here, I'm looking at his entire body. My point of focus may be right there on his, on his body, but the reason it's right there is because I can see his entire body in my peripheral vision that way. Right? If I look a little bit up, I lose his feet. If I look a little bit down, I lose a little bit of his shoulders. Right? <clears throat> so that's, that's the important part there. So a good rule of thumb would be maybe what, like chin to chest? Or chin to uh, yeah, I, I usually look somewhere in here, okay. right? Because there it's very easy for the eyes to take in everything, and it doesn't matter how